I want to make one thing like really, really clear. I don't want my parents involved in this at all. You know, like I don't want them to know. No, no, like I, like I'm a high school student. And like if I don't get in front of a magistrate to call you, right? Okay. Okay, fine. They gave me one phone call and the guard was like waiting for me at the end of the hall. The hall would smell like a boy's room, like no one has flushed a toilet. I was looking into the cells and people were looking out like uh, drunk. And I wasn't drunk and I didn't stab anybody. And I didn't mug anybody. And I didn't steal anything. And here I was, I was being treated like all these people. He's 17, a high school senior, a higher than average IQ, inquisitive, well liked by students and teachers, his name is Charles, but close friends call him Chuck or Charlie, and he's behind bars. It's thousands of years old, and its name is Cannabis Sativa. It's also known as marijuana, pot, grass, weed. This common weed that grows nearly everywhere can intoxicate you. In our time, it's also proved increasingly seductive to young people like Charlie Johnson. And the convergence of their two paths, youth and weed, is prompting new looks at an old drug and the impact it can have on a single life. I'm not going to tell him that he has to stop using marijuana, that it's bad for him, etc. What I am going to say to him is that he has to make certain decisions that even though he may have experimented with marijuana and found it nothing more than a mild intoxicant that has no uh, serious or permanent effect on him, but I'm going to say that it has a lot of legal implications. It's marijuana. Legal implications is a gentle way to describe the trouble a person can get into over marijuana. Its possession is prohibited in practically every country in the world. In 28 of the United States, possession constitutes a felony. Severe penalties have produced a new breed of drug specialists. Lawyers like Bernard L. Siegel, who recognize that the marijuana problem involves much more than laws. Siegel's approach to each case is intensely personal. Well, let me ask you, Mrs. Johnson, did uh, Charles tell you anything more about the, the circumstances of his arrest? Well, not too much, except um, they were standing in the park, and they may have been smoking. He didn't give me too many of the facts. All right. Do you know whether Charles has been smoking marijuana for long? I don't think he's been smoking for long, but he did admit that he had been smoking before this. I gather from the way you put it, though, that you didn't have any knowledge prior to this time that uh, Charles had been using Oh, marijuana. no. Oh, no. None at all. One of the reasons Charles' situation is so serious to me, Mrs. Johnson, is the fact that under the law of our state, uh, the crime of possession of marijuana is a felony. Wait, 162. Step down. Put your back against the board. 5-7. Medium. Brown. Hazel. Medium. Just stand there. Hold your arms out in front of your palms up. Scar left wrist, inner. No other marks. Have a seat in that chair. Sit up straight in the chair. Look right here. Swing around in the chair and face the star on the wall. Push your hair away from your eyes. Lower your chin. Hold it. Stand up against that wall. Face the camera. Put your feet together and your hands down to your sides. Stand up straight. Face this way. Turn your body. Face the X on the wall. Close your mouth. Cannabis sativa, the common marijuana plant, appears in history as hemp whose fibers made strong rope. 
It was used for this purpose at least 3,000 years before Christ. Clothes were woven from it by the Scythians in southern Russia. They also discovered that the smoke from burning hemp seeds made them extremely drunk. For the ancient Chinese, marijuana or hemp would become a medicine to be chewed, drunk or smoked. It was also shared with friends at social gatherings. The Indians attached religious significance to marijuana and processed it into sweets, milkshakes, and again for use in pipes. Known in Africa and the Near East as hashish, the resin from the female marijuana plant is to this very day the intoxicant most favored by the Arabs. Cannabis as a drug did not catch on in Europe until the 1800s. Then a handful of literary figures took it up and exaggerated its powers for good and bad far beyond its real effect. While in this country, medicines made from marijuana were available until 1937, and Squibb, Eli Lilly, and Park Davis recommended cannabis extracts for asthma, tension, pain. In the early 1900s, Mexicans brought marijuana across the border. Merchant seamen introduced it to New Orleans as an intoxicant, and its usage spread into America's heartland by Mississippi steamboat. In the 1920s and 30s, with alcohol prohibited, Beer's mushroom that what had been primarily a non-white drug would break out of the ghetto and sabotage the American work ethic on which the establishment was founded. Sensational news stories began popping up that told of marijuana driving men mad, of young children addicted, even deaths. It didn't matter that the stories weren't based on fact. People believed. Outraged parents demonstrated, and Hollywood jumped in to capitalize on the public panic, exaggerating the drug's effect. waves trial of the defendant Ralph Wiley. It is convinced that he is hopelessly and incurably insane, a condition caused by the drug marijuana to which he was addicted. It is recommended, Your Honor, that the defendant be placed at an institution for the criminally insane for the rest of his natural life. I see no reason why the request should not be granted. We know now that marijuana does not cause insanity. It does not provoke violence. It is not addictive. But the debris from such muddled notions lingers on. The effect has been a radical counter-reaction. Today, marijuana supporters are just as biased in their claims for pot as their parents and grandparents were in denouncing it. When I'm high, my head works uh, more intelligently, more accurately. Well, I could express my opinions better and I can open up with people. I'm 18, uh, an art student, and I do believe in smoking marijuana. I just enjoy getting stoned. You feel like Eurofio, how they pronounce it? Euphoria. Euphoria, yeah, very happy. Then you question your, your, your goals, like what have I done in life and that kind of trash. You can in certain moments with certain musics, certain environments such as by the sea, have some rewarding spiritual relationships with, with the rest of the universe. It occasionally gets me in trouble. I got locked up just a week ago. I believe that the oppression upon the plant is another form of political oppression on the part of an established order. Marijuana threatens the, the entire political and behavioral and social pattern of the United States. Once thought to be favored by young people on the fringes of established society, marijuana is no longer just their thing. 
More and more, we hear of stockbrokers, advertising people, lawyers, doctors, writers who once a week smoke pot. Okay, I'm 26 years old, I'm a public accountant, and I smoke. It's like a drink, you know, it helps you relax. It's as good as liquor. I mean, let's face it, if the world was perfect, nobody would get high. Relaxes me, makes me feel happy, that's all. I feel that a lot of the fear is due to the fact that the use of marijuana is spreading into the middle and upper classes. I've tried it. I could live without it. I got the giggles. That was about all. A naive person can get sucked into something more uh, detrimental to them. That always leads to something stronger. It's been proven. Habit forming and it's a deteriorating sort of thing. It upsets the brains. Once you start on this drug, you can't get away from it. And it finally leads uh, to death. For most people, especially those over 40, Hollywood did its work well, and the extremism of the 30s still dominates their thinking. Eighty percent of all Americans favor strong laws against marijuana. And despite a growing clamor to legalize the weed, nearly 70 percent support the strictest of enforcement, even as they did three decades ago. Their attitudes are reflected by the police. I think it would be one of the biggest disasters this country would ever face if they were to legalize marijuana. Alcohol is wrong, don't mean that we should now have two rooms. Now we have to worry about two classes of people eat the uh, alcohol abusers and the marijuana abusers. I've seen boys come up here three years ago that were on marijuana, then come back after three years and find them with tracks on their arms that look like a Redding Railroad. They're so bad on heroin. I really don't feel that society could accept something like marijuana and uh, be able to control the uh, people that advance into the uh, heroin stage. We have a lot of kids that are weak, or adults that are weak, and this is their escape by using drugs, whether it be marijuana or it be heroin. Hey, Huey. You got a couple of bodies coming up from the 9th district, so be on your toes. Gordon said that he's given to the Thanks. As obviously decent kids from all sectors of the community come in conflict with the marijuana laws, thoughtful police seek to distinguish between one who uses and one who sells. When you, get a, when you get a kid with a cigarette... Right, the full force of the law right. shouldn't be applied to this kid. No, he should be... Right, everybody's I, entitled to one mistake. Right, right, I agree. Now, this kid might have a good record. He might have been a good student. Right. Victim of circumstances. Right. He gets mixed up with the wrong crowd, so he gets grabbed with one cigarette. Right. Right. right? Or he gets grabbed right. with a roach. Right, as, as the law reads right? now... But yet, a... the law says possession... He gets two, it's a felon, he gets two years. Right. Well, I, don't, I personally I don't feel this is right in, I, this, in this particular case. But when you get a, an individual that's got 20 pounds of marijuana... Not even 20. Oh, five, five, five pounds. pounds. Five pounds. Or a pound. Pounds. A pound. You know because, he's dealing. But marijuana laws, no matter who they're enforced against, can be effective only if they're based on fact. And marijuana laws are flawed. Legally... Grass is classified a narcotic. Actually, it's not. Nor is it an hallucinogen, nor a stimulant, nor a depressant, but it has elements of all. Marijuana has both male and female plants, with the female resin, stems and leaves, far more intoxicating than the male. Its chemical structure is complex, with the most active element believed to be THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, the most comprehensive study of marijuana yet made was completed more than 75 years ago. A 3,000-page report compiled by the Indian Hemp Commission, it concluded that with moderate use, there was no evidence of physical damage. New York City's LaGuardia report in the late 1930s reached the same conclusion. Though we know little more about marijuana today than we did in 1895, some general conclusions can be drawn. Smoking may cause nausea vomiting, diarrhea. There may be an increase in the pulse rate. It was once thought that the marijuana smoker could be recognized by his dilated pupils, 
Researchers now say there is little, if any, dilation. The mouth and throat may feel dry and parched. The smoker may suffer mild tremors. Though there is no change in blood sugar, there is hunger and a high appreciation for food. Time seems to move more slowly. Psychologically, where one smokes, when one smokes, what one expects has much to do with a person's marijuana experience. If while smoking, your brain sees a chair in a neutral setting, there may be little or no reaction. If surroundings are luxurious, the sensation may be pleasant. But if one's afraid, if youth where he comes from is considered socially deviant, if he doesn't think much of himself, he may get bad reactions, ranging from mild depression to extreme anxiety, even panic. In some cases, symptoms may last or recur days or weeks after having smoked. The way psychological and chemical quirks interact with marijuana to alter perception has only recently become the subject of laboratory research. Here we've discovered that Marijuana seems to have little effect in simple tests involving speed, but when it comes to matching colors or remembering numbers which require judgment and physical coordination, there is impairment. Once the government blocks such testing, now it underwrites scientists as they try to define more accurately the marijuana experience. Even so, no one predicts we'll find out all we need to know about long-term effects in less than 10 to 15 years. Highly practical and needed experiments into short-term aspects of the drug involve marijuana and automobiles. To compare drivers who've been drinking, smoking pot, and when sober, a driving simulator has been employed. So far, tests show that alcohol increases errors involving brakes, speedometer, and turn signals. No significant increase in error was noted after the same driver smoked marijuana. He did just about as well as when sober. But researchers caution that a simulator is not a car. There's been no test of driving for long periods of time. The smoker tends to grow preoccupied with a single object. Will this affect his reaction to the total driving experience? So far, the best conclusion seemed to be, if you're intoxicated, no matter what the cause, don't get in the driver's seat. And at this stage of the game, Measuring what this drug can do should not be left to the individual experimenting with himself. It belongs in the laboratory, where animals are used. One test involves injection of radioactively treated THC. Then scientists trace its path. They're looking for its metabolic fate. What chemical alterations occur while it's in the body? This would indicate how a human being responds to it. Other tests are in the works. It is now known that serious liver damage has occurred in some heavy marijuana users when no previously known cause, such as alcohol or other drugs, is involved. With the support of the National Institute of Mental Health, we're seeking much-needed answers to important questions. How does marijuana affect the heart, the kidneys, brain, nervous system? What are its social implications? But while the scientists work, others are left to cope with the day-to-day -day problems that arise when this ordinary weed and some young man or woman come together. It's their job to assimilate facts and to clear away the misconceptions which have made a mystery of marijuana for too long. Do you feel that perhaps from smoking marijuana that Charles would go on to a harder drug, say heroin? Well, Mrs. Johnson, I don't think that there's any uh, reason to believe, at least from the medical standpoint, that the uh, exposure to marijuana and smoking marijuana causes any desire or need uh, to get into a hard drug, such as heroin, a really dangerous drug. But all of other implications to smoking marijuana, uh, and one of them, of course, is that uh, having experimented with marijuana and perhaps not having found it to be physically harmful, uh, many young people think that, therefore, society has misrepresented the seriousness of other drugs, which they've also prohibited. And therefore, the feeling is that they can disregard all the warnings they've heard about the dangers of heroin. Another problem, of course, is that 
the persons who are the real dealers in marijuana are frequently people who themselves are using hard drugs like heroin. And of course, being exposed to people like that who think that the that hard drugs are really quite the way to live, that many young people will be misled into thinking that they also should perhaps consider experimenting with the hard drugs. Your son is likely to tell me that young people want to use marijuana because it's their own special kind of thing. Uh, the way that adults, uh, they see it, uh, have alcohol as their own kind of special thing. I think the, the one fair comment that I can make about it to him, which I believe very strongly, is that uh, young people who are coming to physical and emotional maturity have a lot of problems to cope with. They're growing up. And it makes it even more difficult to cope with this coming to uh, maturity to introduce the use of stimulants uh, at the same time. A lot of young people are not ready for it. They're not capable of even using it in mild form. They have to recognize that they're making a conscious decision that's going to possibly lead them to be involved with the law. That means expenses for bail and for lawyer's costs. If they're convicted of a crime, it means a criminal record, which means great difficulty in getting jobs, difficulty in getting into colleges sometimes or getting college loans. They make travel to foreign countries very difficult for them. There are all kinds of licenses and privileges that you cannot get from various states because of this. In effect, a great many life options may be cut off for them. Now, I'm going to lay this out to him, and he will make a decision for himself, Mr. Johnson, as to what he's going to do in the future. No one asks that Chuck Johnson and others like him reach any decision that isn't based on facts. But what we don't know constitutes one kind of fact. We really don't know what marijuana does, good or bad, to any individual at a given time. We cannot predict reactions. We do know it's a foreign agent that can be traced to various body organs, but long-term effects are not known. We know less about pot than we do about the relationship between whiskey and cirrhosis, cigarettes and cancer, cyclamates and organic damage. Lastly, rightly or wrongly, legalization of marijuana, if it ever comes, is far in the future. And any change in status will come only after much more is known than we know now.